Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope you are doing well. This week, we are starting the book of Numbers, Bamidbar, which is really crazy. The fourth book of the Torah we have, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and we are in Bamidbar, Numbers, the fourth one, meaning that we are three-fifths of the way through. Crazy stuff. Uh, a lot of times when we were studying the Parsha, we, we, we focus a little too much on the details and don't see the bigger picture. So what I like to do is every time we enter a new book of the Torah, it's to kind of take stock on where we are and what each book of the Torah really represents. So the first one, let's start with the beginning, Bereshit, Genesis. This tells the beginning of the world, the creation of the world, as well as the creation of the Jewish people. We have our most famous Jews in the entire book of, of Genesis. Um, we have Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and then before this we had Noah and, and uh, Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. All of those people we meet in the book of Genesis. The book of Shemot tells the story uh, of the exit from Egypt, but the entrance into the covenant with God. Just to, that we leave Egypt, we are, a, we are a, a, a enslaved people, but then leave and get the Torah and we enter in the, into a covenant with God. The third book of the Torah, Leviticus by Yikra, tells us how to be in that covenant. It is almost entirely comprised of laws and regulations. So it's whew, good that we are, we are out of that one. And then number four, Bamidbar, where we are now, numbers. Uh, and it tells us kind of the journey from Har Sinai when we, 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 we kind of been camped at the bottom of Mount Sinai until we actually move in to Israel. We spend a little bit more time in the desert than we in, in, uh, originally planned. We make some mistakes and that's why it's called Ba Midbar in the desert. And then we have uh, Deuteronomy, Devarim, which I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it. We'll, we'll get there eventually. So we're in the fourth book of the Torah, by, uh, Ba Midbar, Numbers. So it's called numbers because we get a census at the beginning of the Sefer and at the end of the Sefer. Censuses are interesting because why, why do the Jewish people need them? It's not like they're like picking House of Representatives, like, not like they need to know like exact populations. And God definitely knows, if God is all knowing, then God definitely knows how many Jews there are. So why take a census? So Rashi, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki, who we often discuss, comments that this is to show that every single person, uh, God values each individually because a pauper and a king are all counted, you know, they're one of the census. There's no one person better than the other. And then also why counting? Why is counting such a fond thing to do? It's like when we count up days to something exciting, to our birthday, to an exciting event, to a concert, to a play, whatever, um, that, that we're counting and it's out of, out of love. So God loves the Jewish people and so God counts the Jewish people. So just to go back, why are we in the desert to receive the Torah? Because we could have received the Torah anywhere. Um, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Benachem Mendel Schneerson of Chabad, teaches some cool uh, lessons about this. So, the desert has no owner. By giving the Torah in the desert, God showed that no one person or tribe can control it. Every Jew has equal claim, just as every Jew is equal in the census. To approach the Torah, we must make ourselves ownerless by stepping beyond our individual personalities. The Torah reflects God's infinity, transcending our understanding. To relate to this infinity, we must transcend our personal selves. Cool. Love it. Love that idea. We're not, we're not just one. We are, we are one, but we are one of many. Am echad belev echad. Um, ish echad belev echad, as we said at the, at the foot of Mount Sinai that we'll, we talk about on Shavuot. Um, like one man with one heart, one person with one heart. We transcend our personal selves and join this, this group of people. The desert is barren and desolate. When our ancestors received the Torah, they had to depend on God for food, clothing, and water. And yet far from worrying, they received the Torah with loving trust. So instead of giving primacy to our material concerns, we should continue the Torah our priority and remain confident that God will provide us with our needs as he provided for our ancestors. And then also the barrenness of the desert can also be understood as a metaphor for feelings of spiritual barrenness and emptiness. Even when a person sees himself as an arid wasteland, you should not despair for precisely in such an environment, God reached out to our people and gave them the Torah. I, I love this final one. That's really, really beautiful. We know that we are never far. We are, you're never not redeemable. There's, you're, you, there's nothing you can do to be, to be unredeemable. In the same way that we may be you know, scared or um, nervous to, to make choices, 
when we think we're too far gone. Like, for example, learning about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed about the all the information that there is out there, and we don't even try to learn, versus every step is helpful and good. In regard to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I will not get into that at this moment, um, but if you're looking for any resources, please, uh, please write to me. Hopefully you have my email. I'm happy to share some resources because it's really so important. Every Jew, every person who believes that Israel should exist should be standing up for Israel. We are such a small part of the population. We have been overwhelmed. We, we will continually be overwhelmed because our voices are so important. Every single Jew matters, just like in the census, bringing it all back, Vayikra numbers, Bamidbar numbers. Thanks everyone for listening. I will be here. You'll see me on Shavuot.